Yeah, I think Sam Darnold is the top QB ad. He's been playing really well as of late, gets the Cowboys next week. Daniel Jones is still running, so I like him there. Uh, Chuba Hubbard, Alexander Madison, Naheem Hines, Cordero Patterson, some running backs that have really stepped up and gotten a lot of volume as of late. And then Royce Freeman, Zach Moss, Peyton Barber, and Giovanni Bernard are some backup options in case you miss out on those top four running backs. Henry Ruggs is my top wide receiver ad of the week, followed by Cole Beasley, AJ Green, Emmanuel Sanders, still can't quit Terrace Marshall Jr., uh, Kadarius Tony, just because every giant is banged up right now. And then I know tight ends is kind of a wasteland, but Cooper, Knox, and Freermuth are, are guys who found the end zone this week and, and have been seeing a little bit of consistent volume. So uh, if you're diving deep at tight end, those are some names for you. We're all pretty much. If if you don't have you know Travis Kelsey or Darren <laughs> Waller, you're diving deep pretty much uh, at tight end. I guess I could throw T.J. Hawkinson in that list because aside from from yesterday, he's been pretty good for, for the first few weeks of the season. Um, Zach Moss was was on that list, and this is a guy who went from a healthy scratch, or at least we thought he was a healthy scratch, a surprise inactive. How about that? A surprise inactive in week one uh, to coming back and having a smallish role in week two to. Uh, suddenly getting most of the snaps at running back in week three um what i i I don't even know what to do with this backfield now (laughs) yeah i i I mean he played 55 percent of the snaps yesterday he led them with 13 carries for 60 yards and then had three targets called all three of them for 31 yards and a touchdown uh my reaction to that marcus was uh what as well so (laughs) It looked like Devin Singletary was the lead back through two weeks. Now, after yesterday, it's looking like Zach Moss uh, is at least competition to steal the starting rollback. Plus, like I said earlier, Josh Allen scored a rushing touchdown, nearly had one last week. I think we're back to the point right now, Marcus, where both of the Bills running backs are worth rostering, but neither one can be started with any sort of confidence right now until we at least see this maybe settle out because it could just be how it's been the last two weeks, give and take each week. Uh, it's it's it feels like it's going to be a lot like last year where like neither guy is going to be really exciting enough to feel confident in starting him uh, every week speaking of confidence and starting uh peyton barber big game for the raiders 23 carries 111 yards also had a touchdown playing in place of the injured josh jacobs um this feels like a mirage man like this (laughs) we're not going out and adding peyton barber expecting him to do this every week right he seems just like an emergency option at this point yeah, that's exactly what he is. I actually had to pick him up in in the pace league that we are in together. It's a 14-team league, and I, I was without Josh Jacobs, so I said, all right, I guess I'm using Peyton Barber here. And, and it paid off for week three. I don't anticipate it paying off really at any point again this year, especially because once Jacobs is back, Peyton Barber goes to, to the wasteland again. Like, Kate, Kenyon Drake is clearly in this second RB role, even when Josh Jacobs is out. So I do think you could drop Kenyon Drake right now if you have him on your roster, because when are you ever going to feel confident using him? But Barber is really just a deeper league emergency type of pickup, Marcus, if you need some running back help. But once Josh Jacobs is back, throw this guy back on the waiver wire. So I know I said that, right? And then as I'm thinking about this, the Raiders have the Chargers on uh, Monday Night Football next week. And I you know, said earlier that you can start running backs against the Chargers. So maybe if Peyton Barber is still there, worth a flex spot <laughs> in week four? If, I, I think he's the ultimate you, you have on your roster if you have Josh Jacobs. Because then you're, you're comfortable either way going into Monday Night because Jacobs could be up in the air. There's no way I would feel comfortable starting him on Sunday if Jacobs was still in, up in the air going into Monday. Yeah, that's probably fair. Um, Naheem Hines still hanging around in that Colts offense, still making plays, still getting targets. Uh, do we worry about Jonathan Taylor after three weeks? Marcus, you know I'm a huge Jonathan Taylor fan, <laughs> and I, I want to say no, but yes, I am worried now because Jonathan Taylor yesterday only had 10 carries for 64 yards. Not only did Naheem Hines have six carries for 25 yards, he got a goal. It, it was like a nine-yard touchdown run. They didn't give it to Taylor. They gave it to Hines. Then Hines had six targets, his second game this year with six or more targets. Taylor only had three, and Naheem Hines also played more snaps. 
I get it's partially game script dependent because the Colts were trailing for much of this game, but that means that in games where the Colts are trailing, we're going to see Jonathan Taylor pulled off the field for Naheem Hines. Marcus, this feels like I woke up in early 2020 season where we're waiting on Jonathan Taylor and we're saying once he gets the opportunity, he's going to run wild. We've seen that happen already, and they're still heavily getting Naheem Hines involved. I, I wish I could tell you there's no reason to panic on Jonathan Taylor. You're not dropping him or anything like that. But there's there's reason to be very worried right now about Jonathan Taylor. He had 64 yards on 10 carries. I mean, you know, you can do the easy math. That's 6.4 yards per carry. You would think that alone would be enough to keep giving him the football. He was obviously effective. But uh, Frank Reich apparently just didn't see it that way. And, and he saw a lot of Naheem Hines uh, getting opportunities on Sunday. Uh, all right, so... Having gone through all of that, who are you marking as your top waiver wire option for week four? For me, it is Chuba Hubbard, uh, who will be filling in for Christian McCaffrey, who has a hamstring strain. They're not sure if they're going to put him on the IR or not yet, but he's going to be out at least a couple of weeks. It's sounding more like it might be a few weeks. And we saw last season what a running back can do in Christian McCaffrey's absence. Like Mike Davis went from being a journeyman running back who we had no interest in fantasy to being an RB1 on the year and an RB2 in points per game because he saw 70 targets. And that's why I'm so excited because Christian McCaffrey is such a unique player that the Panthers have a ton of design pass plays to the running back in their playbook. And I mean, he basically roll on any passing play. He's running a route. He's not just standing next to the quarterback pass blocking, which naturally is just going to lead to a lot of targets for the replacement option because they're just not going to completely revamp their playbook on the fly. Hubbard in week three, he played 56% of the snaps. Freeman only had 14. He had 11 carries and five targets. And that is in a game where McCaffrey played for most of the first half. So I think there will be a lot of volume going Hubbard's way just because of his role in this offense now. I will say what I said last year, too, when Mike Davis took over. Like, Don't necessarily pick up Hubbard and plug him in expecting McCaffrey-type production. I know that that sounds like a duh sort of thing, but you know, I feel like I just have to put that out there. Like, you know, if, if he's not giving you 25, 27, 30 points a game, don't sit here and say Chuba Hubbard is whack. No, you just are missing a player that is sort of you mean, know, next level. <laughs> so I if he gives sort of you 15 thing. a game, like that's amazing off the waiver wire. Yeah, that'd be absolutely great if that's what he ends up giving you. Uh, I would say that I, I may use a waiver priority on Cordero Patterson this week just because uh, I do think there's a big role for Hubbard, but I think that role is, you know, it's as long as Christian McCaffrey is out. Cordero Patterson, I think, is here to stay in the Falcons' offense. I mean, they are using him in so many different ways. He is primarily a running back. They're lining him up in the backfield. But that gap, that snap uh, gap between he and Mike Davis is closing week by week. Uh, it's starting to become more of a 60-40 split. I think it started out, it was kind of a 70-30. Uh, you know, now it's about a 60-40 and maybe getting even closer. On top of it, they can still split Patterson out wide. I mean, he was a wide receiver originally when he came in the league. They can still use him as such when they want to. And I just feel like, you know, the, the role is actually ongoing. Uh, I'm surprised he's still available in so many leagues. But uh, go get him because uh, I think this is going to be a thing that continues. I didn't think we saw this coming. I mean, nobody nobody anticipated Cordell Patterson being a thing this year, Florio. But, but here we are. Yeah, I, I definitely didn't. And the reason why so many people were excited, I, I wasn't a huge Mike Davis supporter, but the one thing I thought he would get was consistent targets. And yeah, he did see four last week, uh, yesterday, but seven for Patterson, two weeks in a row now with seven targets for him. He led them in receiving yards. He is definitely a name that you should be grabbing off the waiver wire this week. Definitely, definitely. Uh, by the way, if you want more waiver wire picks, you can go check out Michael F. Florio's weekly column on NFL.com. You can find it at NFL.com slash waiver wire. So uh, there will be plenty of those names and some analysis about uh, why you should be making a play for some of those guys uh, heading into week four.